fight fiends, desire like the Gore Lord, uh, God to some, devil to others, uh, but a full buff to all. You have entered my lair while I'm busy working on a new, uh, unholy piece of music, one that will conjure the forces of darkness and wreak havoc amongst the most undesirable mortals. Which reminds me of a modern favorite of mine, possibly the most metal horror comedy to ever grace the screen. In fact, I would like to dedicate this episode to His Majesty, the King of Horror Metal, King Diamond, and his amazing band and crew. Most notably his drummer, my fiendish friend Matt Thompson. With that said, like, subscribe, toll the bell, and let me proclaim death to false metal as I hack into the comedic bloodbath known as Deathgasm. Deathgasm is a 2015 New Zealand comedy horror hell ride, written and directed by Jason Lee Hayden in his directorial debut. The film stars Milo Cawthorn as Brody, who is coming to stay with his uncle Albert and Aunt Mary, played by Colin Moy and Jody Rimmer. Sadly for Brody, his mum had well, fallen into some rather bad habits. I had to shift here after my mum went on a massive meth bender and tried to suck off a Santa Claus in a crowded mall. And he arrives in his uncle's suburban town as an outsider. Brody, who lives and breathes metal, is looked down upon by his uber-religious aunt and uncle and outright hated by his cousin David, uh, played by Nick Hoskins-Smith. In fact, David, who is cold as ice, not only hates Brody, but his friends too. Because when we meet Brody's friend Dion, played by Sam Berkeley, well, he's being victimized by David and his sidekick Terry, played by Aaron McGregor. Brody helps dissolve the hazing long enough to notice Medina, played by Kimberly Crossman, a lovely young lass who is dressed in white and catching every eye in the school. Brody takes an immediate interest in the girl, but is reminded that... No way, you tapping that. Chicks like that, they don't go out with metalheads, they bang apes like your cousin. So sad. Brody and Dion link up with their other friend Giles, played by Daniel Cresswell, where they get into a game of Dungeons and Dragons. So only Brody gets a little bored and starts daydreaming about, well, heavy metal. But his fantasies are interrupted when David and his jock buddies attack the three misfits with squirt guns. Only... Jesus! It's piss. They, they sprayed us with piss. Brody is endlessly haunted by feelings of alienation and failure. So he does what many an outcast metalhead does and goes to the local record store run by husband and wife Byron and Abigail, played by Errol Shand and Kate Elliott, where after being made for the headbanger that he is, Check it out. Oh, axe and sword epic. Yeah, man. It's only one of 666 ever printed, numbered in blood by Ricky Daggers himself. Metal vinyl's over there. By that kid. Tis here we meet Zack, the epitome of heavy metal rebel. Who? Ah! 
Zach got expelled after stabbing a kid with a math compass because he stepped on his King Diamond tape. Or was it a set square? The two become fast friends and decide with a little help from Dion and Giles to form a band. Deathgasm. Roll credits. Only instead of coming out of the gate as the heaviest thing since Slayer, they... like the wild stallions. Yes, heavy metal up your butthole. Zack takes Brody for a stroll one day and they turn up in an old house belonging to a hex and sword front man. Ricky Daggers, played by Stephen Muir. Daggers confronts the two boys, but they are interrupted by the arrival of a strange man named Vaden, played by Tim Foley. Daggers knows he's in for more than pain, and he quickly hands the boys an old album, along with a warning. Hey! Daggers! Hi, Dad! God, it with your life. The boys flee, and the would-be Iggy Pop impersonator gets cornered and dispatched. After safely getting back to Brody's, they quickly find that the record given to them by Daggers is not exactly the heaviest of heavies. Never gonna give, never gonna give. What the hell? It's a fucking Rick Astley record! Ah, but there was sheet music hidden in the album cover, and the boys decide that they should learn the haunted hymn and turn it into a deathgasm song. Meanwhile, it turns out that Vaden is uh, actually a member of a secret order, one hell-bent on securing the black hymn, and he goes to the group's leader, the puppet master of sorts, Aeon. Played by Andrew Lang, who quickly decides to terminate Vaden's contract. No, please! Take his fucking head off. No! Twice. Oh, come on, that's a custom made Satori rug, idiots! You put a tarp down first. Do it again. Again! Do it! Again! It's good. Like so many before them, the members of Deathgasm take to the woods to make a homemade music video. Brody decides to go on a snack run and bumps into Medina, where he explains his love of all things metal to her over ice cream, and the two form a bit of a bond. Back at rehearsal, the boys are making a wee bit of progress on the black hair. In fact, Brody's uncle and the other locals are being affected as they play the song. Even Ivy Gale can sense there is something weird afoot. The spirits begin to stir, and Uncle Albert's household god begins to transform into something much more sinister. Only Brody chokes up and ends the song prematurely, where things quickly return to normal. This one time? This chick grabbed my nuts too hard, and my splooge came out red. Brody decides to translate the Latin writing on the black hem, and soon realizes that it might have something 
to do with the conjuring of unclean spirits. Only before he can share the news with his bandmates, he is attacked by Cousin David and Henry and beaten to a pulp. Meanwhile, Medina bumps into Zack and gives him a note to pass on to Brody, as she wants to meet him in the park. Zack decides to keep the note uh, a secret and winds up lurking in the dark when she arrives that evening in the park. He gives her some alcohol and begins moving on her. Soon after, the band gets back to working on the Black Hymn and they bring their little Twilight Symphony to a close. And the passage to hell is soon opened. Regardless of the flickering lights, electricity in the air, passing out, and the general sense that Something wasn't quite right. The boys are back in school the next day, where Cousin David's friend Terry has turned into, uh, well, uh, a bit of a deadite. Uh, as is their teacher, who is having the worst case of hemorrhoid farts ever imagined. Brody relays his concerns to Zack, who is indifferent until he hears a strange noise coming from the garage. And it turns out that Zack's daddy is ready to give them the eye in a whole new way. After saying goodbye to Daddy, Brody remembers that there's one person who might be able to help them. and they race to see her. Meanwhile, the other members of Deathgasm realize that, well, certain people in the neighborhood have been invaded by the invisible guests, and no sooner than they bring their Dungeons and Dragons skills into the world of the living, Brody and Zack arrive at the record store to find a bloody Abigail, who is less than thrilled that they played the Black Hymn, and uh, she begins to tell them that their playing the unholy tune unleashed the demon Eloth and his minions, and that all the townspeople suffering from possession shall become blood-spewing murderous monsters. She then begins to tell them what they must do to reverse the curse, but is soon turned into the girl in the bloody dress by her now-possessed husband. The boys flee, but meanwhile, Aaron and his cult arrive in town, where demonized Terry tells them that when Eloth finds the darkest mortal soul amongst them, he will possess that person and use their body to carry out his devilish deeds. Tis here we meet Shanna, played by Delaney Tobron, who decides that she is the most evil amongst them, and that she shall be the one to bow down and accept the hill of century. Now stop. Meanwhile, Brody and Zack decide to head back to Uncle Albert's, uh, retrieve the music, and play the hand in reverse. Only Auntie and Uncle are now amongst the living dead, and after barricading themselves in the master bedroom, they find that the only weapons at their disposal are, well, rubber cocks. But no matter. Let it be done. A then unpossessed David returns and Brody gives him the ultimate welcome home.
Are you sure he wasn't possessed? What? Oh, no. Of course he was. Because when he came in, he said uh, something about Satan. Suddenly, a magical wind sends pages of the Black Hound flying out into the moonlight, and the boys are up on the chase. Soon after recovering the missing pages, they find Medina, Dion, and Giles, and the truth about Zack's hiding Medina's moat surfaces. There is a scuffle between the two boys, and now Zack leaves in a rage only to proclaim. Death to false middle! They begin to brainstorm on how exactly to play the hem backwards, but realize that their amplifiers were destroyed when they played the hem. So in the black of night, they adjourn to Ricky Dagger's mansion in darkness to borrow some of his gear. Only the cult is there, and they aren't about to see the return of their demon god hindered by anyone. And they commence with the ritual. Will they escape? Will Zack return? Will there be a broken spell? This film is chock full of gore, humor, and endless metal. Not to be taken in by those who are adverse to those types of things. The laughs are often dark and sometimes off color. The blood is endless and the soundtrack comes at you at several hundred beats per minute. While there are a few jokes that fall flat and some overly campy effects, this lovely little slice of horror comedy is a breath of fresh air in the world of modern horror. Not beholden to tropes, political correctness, or even critical expectation. For those of you mortals that are into a good bit of laughter with your splatter, and who like films like The Evil Dead and Heavy Metal, this flick is going to be right up your alley. I give this killer cut of Heavy Metal Horror 4 out of 5 Devil Horns. Now, not counting repeats, I placed 35 references to King Diamond song titles in this video. Can any of you who are fans name them all? I dare you to try by leaving them in the comments. I hope this brings Matt and King and the entire world of horror metal reason to smile. I'm Eric the Gore Lord, and I'll be seeing you all sooner or later. Stop the Bye.